So, is generative AI, ChatGPT, GPT, Bard, Bing, all the others, is it really the solution to everything, the salvation of humanity, or, as some others are thinking, is it the destruction of everything as we know it? Well, I'm sure you realize that the truth is somewhere in between. If you haven't heard of the Gartner's hype cycle, this model can help us understand where we are and what's going on. And I want to share some insights with you, especially those of you who are team and senior leaders in your businesses, to know how to really get the most out of GPT, not make silly mistakes, and work out how to include GPT into your strategies going forward. So if we talk about the Gartner's hype cycle, it explains a little bit about what's going on. Uh, the cycle starts with a technology trigger, and then you've got a whole lot of hype going on. Quite quickly, the hype increases dramatically. I know people like me probably add to that. Those of us who are excited about new technologies really hype it up. But then what happens, and it can happen quite quickly, is we realize it's not as good as we thought it was. It has some limitations. It has some problems. And then, of course, all the doomsayers come in as we drop off the peak. And sometimes it goes so far as people saying, not only is this not a decent technology, but the technology is going to kill us. <laughs> and we head down into the depths of despair. Then what tends to happen is, unless it is a total fad and just disappears, what tends to happen, we move up the, <laughs> it's a little bit pretentiously named, the slope of enlightenment to the plateau of productivity. And what we mean by that is we just work out how to use it, we work out its limitations, and we work out what it can actually achieve for us. And as a senior leader, as a team leader, you need to move as quickly as possible with generative AI applications. You need to move as quickly as possible to the plateau of productivity. In other words, using it properly. And I think this means three things for us as leaders. The first is that you need to teach your team how to get the most out of ChatGPT or Bard or Bing or, or any of the others. I'll talk about the limitations in a moment, but there's a lot that these AI technologies can do well. I think my two favorites are that it can improve the way that we communicate. It helps us to articulate uh, more clearly. It gets the tone of our messages right. We can improve, especially, of course, our written communications. And secondly, I do think that there are some significant opportunities to increase our productivity. You need to give your team time to experiment, not just on the weekends, not just in the evenings, but this needs to be part of a concerted effort that you and your team do on a weekly basis. In fact, I, need, I think you should insist that they do it. And I think that you should do it too, so that you as the leader are involved in this process. The dumbest response to the last six months of, of uh, generative AI uh, releases, and apologies for being rude to anybody who did this, but the dumbest response is to ban the use of these technologies entirely. Um, yes, of course, we need to be careful. We'll talk about that in a moment. But there are amazing ways in which these things can be used. And the only way you're going to find that out is to be deliberate in experimenting, in trying things and seeing what works and what doesn't. I've said this before. I'll say it now again. AI won't replace people. But people who use AI effectively will replace the people who don't. And you and your team want to make sure that you are using AI effectively and working out what that means. So I think that we need to build that into our, our, our weekly schedules, and I think we'll see the benefits very, very quickly, immediately, I think. Having said that, the second thing that I think leaders need to be considering is that we need to make sure that you and your team understand the limits of this technology. You need to know what generative AI is good for and what it's not good for. And you do need to understand those limits. Was it Einstein who said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, 
will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. <laughs> well, I don't think it was Einstein. When I asked ChatGPT about this quote, it told me that there's no proof that Einstein ever said it. But it's the sort of thing Einstein might have said, and it does make the point. Don't use ChatGPT for things it is not intended to be used for, for the things it can't do. ChatGPT, Bard, Bing, all the other apps are language models. What that means is that they are literally designed to predict the next word that is most likely to be used in this sentence, given the context of the conversation that we're having. I mean, that's literally what it's doing. It's thinking word by word. What's the next obvious word? It's a big improvement, but it's still on the same path as the autocorrect function on your phone, which you know is a disaster. What it doesn't do is verify truth. Seriously, it doesn't care what it says to you. What it cares is that it sounds clever, that it sounds truthful, and it sounds believable. But it doesn't know whether it is clever, truthful, or believable, and it doesn't really care if it is or not. Can I be a bit cynical for a second? I think that this shows how absolutely dire and bad a lot of corporate communication and general communication is at the moment. I mean, that's something that just articulates itself clearly, feels like a magic wizard. It feels like it's so powerful it could take over the world. <sighs> Maybe we should be spending some time upgrading our communication skills so that we sound a little bit clever and smart <laughs> and truthful in, in what we say. But genuinely, you must understand that ChatGPT doesn't care whether it's truthful or not. So you have to double check everything. There was a diet company that actually literally got rid of their call center, replaced them with a GPT-powered chatbot. And then they had to, with their tail between their legs, go back and hire everybody back after a month or so because their chatbot was giving very, very bad dietary advice. It sounded great. It was actually harmful. There was, of course, a lawyer uh, who was uh, trying to get a case overturned based on a precedent from a whole lot of previous cases, delivered the brief to the judge saying there's a whole lot of precedents that say this shouldn't even come to court. And uh, when the opposing legal team had a look at the precedents, none of them existed. And the lawyer had to admit that he had used ChatGPT to develop his brief and hadn't bothered to check. And literally, ChatGPT had made everything up. It's crazy. Now, by the way, to go back to my first point about learning how to use ChatGPT, you can get ChatGPT to verify that what it's told you is actually truthful. And you literally ask it after it's given you an answer. You say to ChatGPT, is this a verified, truthful answer, or did you make anything up? And the good news is that ChatGPT will tell you if it made anything up. Seriously, do that every time you're using ChatGPT for search or research. Just ask it uh, if everything is verified and truthful. <laughs> who, who knew uh, that you should do that? Uh, of course, what you could also do is do a better job of creating prompts and this is the bit that I'm really enjoying. The more information you give ChatGPT and the clearer and cleverer you are in asking it the right questions, we call those prompting it, uh, the better the results will be. So for example, I very often say to ChatGPT, pretend that you are an expert in the subject I'm asking it about um, and only use verified information with sources. Um, and as soon as you do that and then ask it your question, it upgrades the response it gives you dramatically. Also, by the way, you could upgrade to GPT Pro and enable the app extension called Browse with Bing, which allows it uh, to access the internet right away. Now, Bard and Bing already do this if you're using those, although they're not quite as powerful engines as GPT Pro. It's well worth the small monthly cost, by the way. And no, I'm not getting paid to say that. I wish I was 
because I think I've got a lot of people to upgrade to the paid version. Anyway, let me get to the third thing that I think leaders need to be thinking about. And here, <laughs> I, I should have klaxons going off. Maybe my team can put some in the background because this is your warning. This is not a drill. This is it. ChatGPT, Bard, Bing, and all the rest, they're not AI yet. They're not properly artificial intelligence. They're large learning models. And they're definitely not artificial general intelligence, AGI. If you haven't heard that term yet, you'll be hearing a lot of it in the next few weeks and months. Because AGI is the thing we really are talking about. So when a lot of people are talking about all the things that they hope GPT can do for them, what they really mean is they, they're talking about AGI applications. That's generalized intelligence where a, a computer is going to be able to come up with brand new ideas, going to be able to bring insight and intuition, is going to be able to verify um, and prove uh, what they believe. And in fact, we're even going to be able to use the word believe about what the computer says. I think that's quite a long way away. Somebody watching this video in the future might say, well, it came faster than we imagined, but it isn't going to come as fast as some people are saying. What we have now are language models. So having said that, they are coming faster than we actually imagine and faster than some industries care to believe. Uh, where the underlying data in your industry does follow very particular rules, there are algorithms and heuristics that guide the professionals in your industry to a very specific outcome. Maybe even they regulate it in those outcomes then we need to understand that we maybe don't need as much creative, intuitive human intelligence uh, as we imagine, and then AI and AGI will come fast. So for example, a doctor needing to diagnose a disease, unless that disease is a very weird and strange disease where if you know Dr. House, for example, on TV, where you kind of need that level of skill and creativity. Well, if it's just a normal, if you like, disease where doing an x-ray, a CT scan, the blood work will come up with probably 90% of the time the, the results of what the disease is, well, then AI might be able to do it and might be able to do it very, very soon. Uh, turning a floor plan into a 3D architectural design model, well, as long as the floor plan is structured, uh, then everything else just flows from that. And in fact, architects and engineers are already using AI-driven um, engineering and design modules to be able to help them to do that. And it's changing their profession dramatically already. Uh, auditing a bank statement. Uh, maybe there are parts of an audit that require a bit of intuition and creativity. And maybe if you are auditing a criminal enterprise, you need to be smarter than the criminals who are trying to defraud the business. But if you're just auditing a straight bank statement or you're doing a recon of creditors, again, AI can probably do that maybe even better than humans because AI can keep a massive generalized data set um, in their memories, if you like, while they're doing it and they won't miss anything. Preparing standard, standard legal contracts, uh, AI should be able to do that quite quickly. Teaching a student the basics of a subject, the foundational basics and understanding where a student has a particular problem, that there's the best way to help them overcome that learning issue. Again, AI might be useful. Not when you get to more advanced things, not when you're dealing with creative subjects, where new learning is taking place, but building the foundations. And so I could go on and I'm giving you the list of all the professions. Yes, I could go through all of them from top to bottom. Knowing where the machine needs to stop and humans start, that's the third issue I'm trying to put on your table as a senior leader in a business. And this is going to be changing constantly 
each month, each year, over the rest of this decade. You need a framework to make sense of this for you and your team. And you need to put this uh, onto your strategic agenda. So to summarize, the role of the senior leader, the role of a team leader in any and every industry right now is number one, get the productivity and communication improvements that you can from generative AI tools. Secondly, don't make any dumb mistakes by using and misusing uh, generative AI for something it can't really do. And thirdly, add artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence to your strategy planning for the foreseeable future. Allocate some of your best people in your business to lead experiments on finding them and then applying them to your business over the next few years. Maybe the final thing that you can do is that you can speak to our team at Tomorrow Today Global, especially our technology futurists who can help you to make sense of all of this, navigate these crazy times and get the most out of GPT that you can. We look forward to hearing from you if you think we can help you.